As many of you know from our vlog series, I bought a new building and we're turning it into a big new workshop. Now why do I need a big new workshop? Mostly because we need the space to build and film more projects so we can expand the content on this channel. But when I made this decision, I expected some pushback because a lot of our audience works in small shops. And some folks have difficulty relating to a larger shop, even if we're making the same sort of projects in the big shop as they do in their small shops. I know this because I hear people complain all the time about a handful of YouTube channels that started small, then they made some money or they attracted some sponsors and suddenly they're moving into great big brand new shops with fancy tools. It's happened to several and it tends to tick off a lot of their original viewers who just can't afford to upgrade their own workshops. Of course, all of us would upgrade if we could, right? I mean, who doesn't aspire to have a better shop or better tools? So you really can't fault anyone for acquiring the shop of their dreams. I'm not going to apologize for building a successful business. It took nearly a decade of hard work to get where I am, and I still have a long way to go and a lot to learn. Yeah, I have sponsors. This is how I pay my bills. You might make furniture and sell it for a profit, or you sell your time or your labor. I make woodworking videos and sell ad space. It's hard work, and there's so much more to it than just pointing a camera and running my mouth. This business takes a set of skills that most woodworkers don't have just as your job takes a set of skills that I don't have. But I also understand the danger of alienating your audience if they just can't relate to your tools and the projects you're making with them. This is what concerns a lot of folks when they watch their favorite YouTube channels start to get a little too big for their britches. If we were to fill our new shop with industrial machines like 36 inch planers and six foot stroke sanders or whatever industrial woodworkers have, and that's all we use to make our videos, a lot of you wouldn't find that useful and you'd probably tune out. I totally understand that point of view. We've always catered to small shop folks at Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and that's just not gonna change. To prove I'm not just saying that, we set aside a section of the new shop that's roughly the size of one garage bay, 14 by 15, or about 200 square feet. It's about a third smaller than our old shop, but it represents the space a lot of woodworkers have, be it in a basement or a large shed or if you share a garage with a car. This is going to be a small shop in itself, independent of the larger one. Here we'll be building some new jigs and homemade machines, benches, workstations, all sorts of things that are uniquely designed for small shops. We'll focus on compact and mobile solutions because I know from experience the struggles of a cramped shop. We'll also focus on ways to save money. Fancy tools are nice, but we can't all afford them. So we'll be making some sanders, some sharpening machines, a new homemade bandsaw I've been rolling around in my head, all sorts of things to outfit your small shop on a shoestring. And we'll use these things to build a whole new series of simple projects that regular woodworkers build in their regular shops. That doesn't mean we all won't also be building some challenging projects. That's what the bigger shop is for, larger furniture pieces that we never had the room or the tools for in the old shop. It's sort of the best of both worlds for all types of woodworkers in our audience. In fact, we have big plans for a new e-magazine that will feature projects of different levels in a progressive system to educate woodworkers of all skills from beginning to advanced. But that's another subject. I mentioned these plans at the end of our last vlog, but you're never sure how many people last till the end of a video, and this time I had some footage to show you of the new small shop taking space. It's tied into the same dust collection as the main shop. Otherwise, it's completely independent, and it'll be stocked with hobby-grade tools like a contractor saw instead of a big cabinet saw. We'll have a six-inch or six-inch jointer and a portable planer instead of the big ones. And over time, we're gonna fill it with more homemade tools and workstations. It only has two walls, which helps us in the filming process, but a lot of people that share a garage with a car only has two usable walls too, right? By the way, if you're wondering where all the homemade machines that we made in the past went, the short answer is not every storage unit is watertight. So we'll be rebuilding some and redesigning others. Wait and see what happens. And if you're not a subscriber, or you are a subscriber, but you haven't clicked the, that little bell icon next to the subscribe button, do it. That's the only way to get all of our videos to show up in your YouTube feed. People ask me all the time, why haven't you been publishing videos? We have been, they just never click the bell so they don't see it in their feed. And you're not gonna wanna miss what we have in store. Then you can sit back and have yourself a cold one, because you've earned it, my friend. Power carving is a blast. You should try it sometime. Grab some scrap wood and some carbide burrs from Sabertooth Power Carving Tools and just give it a go. You may be surprised what you're capable of, like this folk art eagle I made from 2x6s. 
check out what Sabretooth has to offer at the link below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.